chilling tales for dark nights. The Stranger by Reed Beebe, narrated and produced by Jonathan Jones. The old man found himself alone in the woods, naked, with no company, save the crows calling in the trees above. He had played in these woods years ago. At least he thought he had. He wasn't sure. Memory was tricky. He wondered what he was doing in the woods. Where was his caregiver? The fat woman whose name he could never remember. He did not like that woman's company or her attitude. Always bossing him around like he was a child. He vaguely recalled escaping her once before. But the police had found him and brought him back. Had he escaped her again? He wondered what happened to his clothes. He was not cold, though. The tree leaves were brown and the ground was covered in fallen leaves. Was it autumn? If so, it should have been cold or at least chilly. But the old man was not cold. He felt warm and comfortable. Thomas, said a distant voice. Startled, the old man turned to see who was calling him. Thomas's vision was poor, and he wasn't wearing his glasses. He saw the faraway shape of a man coming towards him. In these dark woods, the man looked like a living shadow coming from the trees. Some blackbirds pecking at the ground flew up as he approached. And to Thomas... The stranger seemed an eerie, mobile darkness. Yes? Answered Thomas. He covered his genitals with both hands. Who are you? Thomas's voice trembled as he asked the question, and he felt shame at revealing his fear. The stranger came closer, and as he did so, his features became discernible. The stranger was a young man in his twenties or early thirties, and handsome. Thomas thought he recognized the man, but he was not certain. Was he a friend or a relative? Come to take him back home? Back to the fat woman that always told him when to take his pills or to take a nap? Tom, said the stranger with a smile. You know who I am. I'm glad I found you. You ready to go? The stranger wore a black t-shirt and jeans. The young man was muscular, with dark hair and eyes. Thomas thought the stranger was gorgeous and felt some longing, some hunger that he could barely remember. I... I don't know you. I'm not going anywhere with you. Thomas was surprised at how angry his voice sounded and how fearful. He hated being an old man, unable to remember who he was half the time, dependent on a bossy fat woman to take care of him. You know me, Tom. You played with me in these woods, remember? Said the stranger. Thomas had no memory of ever playing with this man. When would they have played together? He was so much younger than Thomas. The stranger would have not have been born when Thomas was a kid. I never played with you? Thomas cried. Who are you? The stranger smiled and walked closer. You played with me, Tom. Years ago. You found me hitchhiking on the road and brought me out here. There was a spark. A recollection of an unpleasant memory that tried to surface, but did not quite emerge. Thomas could not recall the details, but he had the feeling that the memory was ugly. You were so friendly. We talked about the songs on the radio... We both loved the Beatles. No, I I don't remember. 
I don't remember you. I wasn't the only person you brought out here either, said the stranger. He pointed at something behind Thomas in the woods. Thomas turned and standing behind him was a young, blonde boy. Wearing a blue dress shirt, but naked from the waist down. The boy's legs were covered in blood, and he smelled rotten. Thomas felt like he had to vomit, but he couldn't. There would be no relief in emptying his stomach, no distraction from the horrible sight in front of him. David was a lot younger than I was, said the stranger. By the time I met you, you were more confident about your skills. The stranger put his hand on Thomas's shoulder and turned him around, forcing Thomas to look into the stranger's dark brown eyes. When I met you, you were more comfortable in killing people your own size. Thomas removed his hands from his crotch and pushed the stranger away. He turned to run, but he was confronted by the half-naked boy, the boy's eyes freezing him with an angry stare. The boy was not alone. Behind him, there were a dozen other boys, some naked, some clothed. All were bloody and smelt putrid. Memories long forgotten came rushing to the surface. Thomas had been careful. He had never been caught or even suspected by the authorities. Thomas had buried the bodies deep in the woods so that the only evidence that remained was his memories. And even those had been destroyed as senility and dementia claimed Thomas. In the end, it was not the law that had caught up with him, but time. The crows cawed in the trees above. The birds were witnesses to his past crimes in these woods, and now their calls seemed to declare a terrible verdict. The children in front of Thomas smiled, and their teeth were menacing and canine. He turned and was about to run, but the stranger blocked his way. Tom, Tom, Tom. you can't run from this. Let me go! Screamed Thomas. That was years ago. I've changed. I've grown old. Let me go! You never answered for what you did, Tom. The stranger walked right up to Thomas, so close that the stranger could kiss him if he wanted. And Thomas was surprised that he desired such a kiss. We all pay for our crimes, Tom. Sooner or later... The stranger smiled, and his teeth were foul and sharp. Thomas screamed as he received a kiss from the stranger. The children grabbed Thomas's thin legs and began to bite into him. The crows watched in silence. 